Bang! Knees and eyes. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy right now. And today we are going over the Tucson TS-195 Integral. This is also known as the Silverback, which you can see because he's got a silver back. Kind of has an upswept um, thing going on, kind of like the Swayback. Very, very cool. Now, this is a Mazwan Mokhtar design. There is so many amazing things about this knife that I love so much, but there's one major flaw. We will get to it in the bad. Let's get to the good. First up, I want to thank our Patreon so much for supporting us. You, I can't explain how much Patreon helps us. Also, during lives, everybody that shows up, all the people that donate money during lives, and we, we just appreciate everything you guys do for us. And also the people that are sub to us, that give us likes, leave us comments. You guys mean so much to us. The people that donate knives to us to give away and people that let us check out some of their knives. I mean, just amazing stuff. This, this community is fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, let's get to this. Specs, really quick. Seven and a half inches overall, three and a quarter inch blade. Perfect EDC size. Let's put it up against the you know what here is the benchmade 940 it's really close to it the 940 is just a tad bit longer but nice and close though it has this little butt thing going on so it's kind of deceiving it gives you just that little bit of length with that but there you go also let's uh let's slap it up against the benchmade bug out Everybody knows the size of the bug out. It is a little bit longer than the bug out, but not by much. And everybody knows the bug out's a great EDC size. Um, I don't think I need to show anymore. There you guys go. <laughs> you know what? Here you guys go. Here's the Benchmade Griptilian, which obviously it's longer. You know, it's an eight inch knife. This is seven and a half, so it's a half inch longer. Okay three and a quarter inch blade. It's a great blade length. Um, especially for people that don't like big blades, you know, and they like that medium sized knife. This is right in the middle ballpark for the perfect EDC size. All right. So the good. Okay. First up, I just want to say this thing looks awesome. I, I really, really like this knife. I just, I got to say that right off the bat. I love this knife. This knife's amazing. The build quality is phenomenal. I am a sucker for a frag pattern. This just looks amazing. Um, the Silverback's a great name, but man, this frag pattern, it's like, it's nice and deep where you can feel it. It gives you actual texture. I love that it's all the way around. Um, the build quality is just so good on this thing everything's done so good and if, you, and if you don't know what an integral is an integral is where they take one solid piece of titanium and they mill everything out of that one piece so instead of being two pieces like this where you have the scale and the scale and a backspacer or you know or standoffs this is just one solid piece amazing so all it has is the one hole through here and you know the cut out through the back but um, the one hole through here, so when you take it apart, everything just slides right out, and you just have one piece in your hand. Except for the clip, you know, the clip is obviously a secondary piece. So, I love the shape. The blade shape's amazing. Um, what a great EDC blade shape. This is like a, a, a worn cliff, I guess you'd say. Usually worn cliffs just go all the way down with one swoop, but it has a couple of edges, but that's the closest thing it could be to. It's a worn cliff. It's like a razor blade. I love it. Um, the blade geometry is pretty good. This is uh, M390, so another plus. Um, the behind the edge thickness, I did sharpen it. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later, but um, it's... What was I about to say? I don't even remember. Um, oh, yeah. It's about 17 thousandths behind. The, oh, I think it was like 16 thousandths. 16, 17 thousandths behind the edge, which is great, great uh, behind the edge thickness. It's actually a little thicker for what they're doing it from Tucson right now. Right now, most of the knives I've uh, checked from Tucson have been like 10 thousandths, 12 thousandths behind the edge. But 15, 16 thousandths, 17 thousandths is amazing so great behind the edge thickness now it does get a little bit thicker quicker i should say 
than uh, some of the other two sunts, but the blade geometry is still really good. So it cuts really good. This tip is nice and fine, and it kind of has this little notch down right there. I would have preferred just to go straight, and the only reason why is because eventually with sharpening, you are going to sharpen that out eventually, but still very, very good. And great ergos, man. The ergos on this thing are fantastic. This little upswell kind of makes it to where it just balances right in your hand really good. And if you choke up into this finger choil, it gives you good grips, even if you grip back here. Now, they could have done the jimping all the way across instead of just doing some here and some here, you know, which is the front flipper. And then this other part is for when you're choking up. Now, I wish they would have just did the jimping all the way across, but I'm not going to put that in the bag. It's not like it's that big of a deal, but they could have done that. But when you when you uh, use the finger choil, great ergos. When you're back here, it's great ergos. This little spot right here kind of just nestles right in your hand really good. I do have extra large hands, but uh, they're skinny, so um, or on the thinner side, I should say. But yeah, just fantastic ergos. I do really like the ergos, no matter what position you're in. I don't know why you'd be in these positions, but it's still really good. It's got a nice thickness to it and a nice depth, you know, just where it's really nice. It does have a little bit of weight to it, but I like it. I like the weight because it's an integral. So it's not like they can mill the insides out, but they did do all the milling on the, the handle. So very, very cool. Um, love the shape. The shape is just amazing. The um, the design and build quality is just amazing. I love this build quality. You can feel it. You get it in hand and you can just, once you hit the detent, it's like, man, that thing is good. You can feel how solid it is and just how amazing the build quality is. I love that they use T8s. The clip works really good. It is a little tight. I will say that, but thicker material does go back in there, but getting it over thicker material is a little harder. I, I'm not going to put it in the bad or anything because, you know, Tucson had so much problems with clips. This is actually a pretty good clip. Um, it's just, I think they could have just polished the ball. So I might take it off and polish the ball up. I think that'll help. But um, when you're putting it over thicker materials, it needs to break in a little bit. That's it. You know, you see that there's not a lot of play right there. It's pretty tight, but it still works good. So I'm not complaining. It hangs on nice and tight. It's still a good clip. Let's get to the action and sound. Now, the sound on this thing is great, but let's get to the action. So this jimping right here on the flipper tab is amazing. The detent is so good, so crisp. Just a nice detent. Now, having a front flipper and a back flipper does pose a little bit of problems. I actually messed up. I meant to fail it. Because when you flip one, the other gets in the way. But that's not that big of a deal as long as you just know that. You just you know go past right here and you're just fine. So you just pull it straight down or you know just go to here. It's not a problem to pass up. That's why I'm not putting it in the bad because it's not that big of a deal. It's so easy to not mess up. You know, if it was easy to mess up, then I would put it in the bad. But it's it's easy to not. Like, it's you're more than likely not to fail it than to fail it, especially after you do it once. Front flipper works amazing. Sometimes it has a ching noise when I close it. Right now, it's not going to do it because I want it to. Yeah. Anyways, it usually does. It's, an, it's a very, very nice sound. Even the thumb flick works great. I mean, it's so you see how fast I'm doing that after closing it. So easy. Middle finger flick, so easy. This thing is a fidgeter's dream. Fidgeter's dream. Um. Now, uh, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> okay so you know what lots of good here lots and lots of good it does have a uh lock bar um insert you see they put it on the, the outside here and it also has the over travel stop so that's amazing now when you open it up it does go straight onto titanium now i don't think that's a big deal because it's a flat steel surface and titanium you know Normally, like, say if it was just a titanium frame lock, right, with no uh, steel insert, that would be a problem to me because it's grinding back and forth, like, because it's going like this back and forth. Being the stop pin is just titanium, that it's just smacking it. So 
Titanium is just as strong as steel. It's not as hard though. So I'd be more worried about it grinding on it than the um than that locking up against it. That's not that big of a deal. And if you really think about it, so does hinders and a lot of other knives. You know, like when they're when they're they have um external stop pins, they go and land right on titanium. Nobody complains about it. But the closing. So it has a reinforced, let me show you really quick. It has like a, like if you look right here, but on the inside, let me go like this. You're going to see that it has like that little nub right there. I'll turn it so you can actually see. You see how it's like a nub down there? Now that's more titanium. So they left like a nub of titanium in there. That's for the closed position. So it has this little nub right there, which stops it from the whole edge hitting the wall or hitting the titanium right here. Because otherwise, if it wasn't there, it would just smack against the wall of the titanium right there. So it keeps a little tiny gap all the way down it by hitting right here when it's closed. That, that keeps the edge from hitting the titanium. Now, lots of different knives do it differently. Like this one, you'll see this is the, the stop pin right there. And you see how it'll lock up against this. And it prevents it from hitting everything. The same idea. You see the edge? How it doesn't hit nothing? Same idea, except for they built a little nub inside here on the titanium. So when it hits the detent ball... It stops. It's got. It's basically the stop pin for the close. Now, where that lands is bad. It lands right there, not on the edge, but right under the edge. Remember, I said I sharpened it. Um, I'll show you just one second because I want. I removed a bunch of steel to see what would happen, and I haven't gotten to it yet. And I didn't want to remove so much that it would cause a problem. Now, I don't know if it's going to cause a problem through the next two, three sharpenings, but I'm going to show you where it lands. You can actually see it right there that little shiny spot that's where it's hitting now what if i sharpen up to that is it going to now after it falls into the detent am i going to be able to push it and it's just going to go farther or or is it going to lock up just a little bit lower because if you look at it right here in the closed position it doesn't look like it it looks like it's uh, going to be bad get the light on it you see that so what you're looking at is right here. So you can see it's not hitting this part at all. It's actually up higher. It's hitting right there. So either one, I need to just sharpen straight up the blade. So basically sharpen straight up this way and not ever sharpen back so basically all my sharpenings from here on out would have to just go straight from here up like that but then what happens when i sharpen it back to right here this is going to be hanging over i don't know i mean maybe that might look cool now what if i do sharpen it all the way back to here is that going to pose a problem i don't know um, I, the only thing I can say is through the, you know, the, the time I have with it, if it winds up doing that, I can let you guys know. So, but as of right now, it is kind of a big deal to me because it's kind of getting under my skin, not knowing what's going to happen. It, you know, like if I do sharpen it back, am I going to have a fatal problem? Not fatal, but you know what I mean? Um, it's not going to be good for the knife for sure. Um, now, the next bad things. So, the grind was a little bit off, which is crazy to me because I've only seen, I think, one other Tucson that grind was off. Especially for their newer models, their grinds are normally phenomenal. But this one was a little bit off. You can kind of see it right here where it's a little off. Well, it made it to where... This side, you see how it's nice and even all the way across. And then right here, it kind of goes up a little bit higher. This side's nice and even. It actually goes a little bit lower right there. Not a big deal. It's not off like crazy or nothing. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I did notice right here at the tip, at the very, very tip, it's just a little bit off. You see how it kind of goes 
down just a little bit. You might not even be able to notice it, but it does. Not that big of a deal, but it is a thing. And I got to bring it up because Two Sons Grinds have been so even that, and I'm a sharpener, so, you know, it's just something that I definitely critique. And, you know, other people that do sharpen their knives will notice it, even with a fixed angled system. Okay, so now the next thing that's bad is this fuller, okay? So it's it's kind of messed up because I'm always advocating and always crying about, man, I wish they would have made that fuller more sharper. I wish that fuller was more sharper. Then bam, they give me this. So maybe I deserve this because this one is sharp, boy. I mean, it is sharp. Watch this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop it open about five times. I don't even have to do it five times. Let's look at it. Look at all that skin. It's all skin right there. It is sharp. It really is. I mean, it's... See that? That was my nail that it just took off. So, they could have just knocked this edge down just a little bit. And I hate saying that after me talking all this crap for all these years or however long it's been. Saying, man, I wish they would have made it sharper. Well, they gave it to me, I guess. But I might just take a little tiny little square of sandpaper and I might just go and it'll be done so not that big of a deal and in return though in return i will say it is hard to fail this thing because it grabs you boy i mean it grabs you good no matter which way or how you flick it it grabs you and it doesn't it's not that big of a deal especially with hands like mine like that are all you know calloused up but let me see if i can show you look at look at my thumb right here you can see it's getting it's getting a little sore. It's getting a little raw. That's from right here. Going like that. My skin's getting a little pink right there. Is it that big of a deal? No, nah, I'll be alright. I just use the other flipping system because it has so damn many. <laughs> the front portion right here does give you some drag when you're pushing through materials. If you can keep the material in this front portion, it actually goes through really quick. And but but if you do like do push cuts and it does have some drag because of this fuller being so sharp and the material kind of accumulates in there so when you're cutting you'll feel different um inconsistencies in drag so some parts will have drag and then if you the material winds up coming up to this front portion it will go really quick but you wind up getting used to it and knowing like um when it's going to happen and how to use the blade and when to use the front portion where it'll slice through really good and then when to use this portion where it might have a little bit more drag so you get used to it and it is a really good slicer because it does have good blade geometry and then the front tip this thing is so good for utility purposes it cuts so good and you get so much leverage in this front tip area where you can put all the pressure in the front tip the same amount that you would put back here during a push cut you can get in the tip for utility purposes and it does cut very well because it does have good blade geometry, but you do have some drag because of this fuller being so sharp and the material does accumulate inside there that you do have to clean out every now and then. Now, I will say, I wonder though if they maybe should have uh, kept it just a front flipper because they could have fixed this whole problem with the stop pin thing if they would have just kept it a front flipper. Or maybe just um, a back flipper right here. I don't know. I thought of a couple different ways they could have put a stop pin in. They could have milled this blade, milled a, uh, um, a, uh, a track in this blade and put in a stop pin right here. Maybe it could have integrated with the, uh, the pivot system or just been a separate item that's screwed in. Um, that or just do one of the flipping systems, either the front flipper or like kind of like the Recenti. The Recenti has a front flipper and it has a stop pin and it's on tie. So kind of like that. Now, I don't mind that it slaps right on titanium. That does not bother me. There's lots of stop pins that stop on titanium. I'm worried about this closing position, it being too high up the blade and me sharpening past the area of where it lands and me having to be careful with it. Now, 
it, yes, it'll still last a long time, um, especially for somebody who doesn't sharpen their knives as much as me, or maybe somebody who just uses it for small EDC tasks. This is M390, so it would last you a lot longer. And let's be honest, an integral titanium knife, an M390, with this build quality from any other company would be three to five times more expensive than this. So I do realize I got a hell of a deal and I do love this knife. The access to the lock bar, extremely easy. The, the reverse detent, it doesn't have a reverse detent track. I'm not gonna knock it for that though. And the reason why is because when it hits the detent ball, it's so easy to push past. It feels like it has a reverse detent track, but it doesn't. But this one's so easy to push past. Like I literally don't even have to See that? And plus also, look at this, the flipper tab is always past it. I never hit, it never fumbles with that detent ball right there, never. Not even when I really, tr like the, the only way like really is if I like try to, you know, but when I just unlock it and let it drop and then I can even let the flipper tab hit my finger and it's already past it normally, except for when I'm messing with it. But like if I let it drop and hit my finger, you see where it's hitting. Like my finger, it's way past it. Right here's the ball, right there's my finger. So it's always past it. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, and also, like I said, it's nice and early and easy to push past. So not a big deal. But yeah, everything about this knife I do love. Except the one thing is that, that one thing is bothering me. Everything else I can look past, everything else is just fine. But that one thing though, it kind of makes me uneasy because it makes me wonder, like, should I hard use this thing? Because I'm going to be sharpening it a lot then, and then I'm going to find out. Or should I just baby it and then never really run into that problem, at least for a long, long time? Then I'll have all my uses out of it. Or do I just sharpen straight up the blade and never even, cut, you know, never cut into it? If you know what I'm saying, where I just sharpen straight up the blade and I always leave this finger choil there. Yeah, eventually it's going to be sharpened back beyond where my finger lands, but I don't know, you know, maybe I might have to do that. Um, let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, man, that's a huge fail. Like it's just out of there. But let me just remind you, this is an amazing knife. I put it this way, this could possibly be one of my favorite two sons. If that wasn't the issue, I'm really loving this one. And then, um, the, the two twenty uh, three, the other Jelly Jerry design that I have loaned out right now. These, those three, I mean, are, I'm hard pressed. I really liked the, um, what was it? There was another one that I really, oh yeah, the 162. I really liked that one. The biggest fail on that one was the clip. But other than that, that thing was uh, like amazing. Some of the best ergos I've ever felt on a knife. This one's really good too though. But, and then that 223, amazing. So there you guys go. There's the video. I love you guys. Peace.